Hello and welcome back to my scrap room. My name is Jennifer Perry. Today we're going to be working on the first whip and chat for Diamond Art Club's Worlds of White by Mandy Manzano. First up is my pouch of extra drills, my drill tray, my yogurt cup trash can, and then the two pink magnets on either side are holding the canvas on the table because 95% of it is hanging off the table. I don't like to roll the canvas if I can help it. If it can hang without touching the floor, I prefer to do it that way. And the only reason the green placemat was on top of the light pad is because part of the light pad was showing and I didn't want to cause any blindness for you guys. We're going to start real fast. I find a drill that is upside down. I started this canvas last night and I forgot that with round drills, I can't see whether they're upside down or not or right side up at night even with my really good room lighting it's very hard for me to tell which ones are up and which ones are are right side up or upside down so i did find one that was being a turtle so i had to get him flipped over there really quickly and you'll notice i am being very careful with picking out my drills i am starting this canvas in the complete center again because I enjoyed that process so much with the Josephine wall. So I'm going to finish the complete center and then I will be able to do the parameter. The problem with this one is starting complete center means that the canvas is sideways. So I'm not working with the symbols right side up. I'm not working with them with the way they're supposed to be. So I'm having to be very careful about which bottles I'm picking up and making sure that I'm matching the drills to the correct symbol. Also, I have several arrows. The other tricky factor with this kit is there are several arrows in this kit and they go all directions. So what I have done is I've highlighted them on my bottles to kind of be an alert system to me. Hey, make sure that's the bottle that you want before you start putting drills down because I hate picking off drills. If I put the wrong drill in the wrong spot, I hate picking them off. So I really want to do everything I can to not do that. See, there's a bottle there. I'm just double checking myself. Yep, that's the drill that I want. And then I'll go ahead and start working. Now, if you've noticed, I have not filmed a de-kitting video yet for Into Wonderland because I haven't finished it. I'm almost there. I have one cent I have one strip. I'll spit that out in a second. I have one strip on the very bottom to do. I should be able to get that finished this week. But I was thinking that I have several large format canvases that are going to take me months to complete. And I have always been a one kit, one placer kind of girl. I don't want to try and confuse my kits in any way, shape or form. So I've always been like, nope, you work on one kit at a time. But as I was doing a quick inventory of my stash, I was like, oh my goodness. I have more large format than I have medium size kits. This is going to be a problem because you guys are going to get tired of seeing whipping chats for the same kit over and over and over. And frankly, I get a little bored filming the same one over and over and over. So I kind of get it. I understand exactly where you're coming from. So I had to devise a way for me to not get my drill trays and canvases mixed up if I chose to work on multiple kits at the same time. And what I came up with is I will do a large format and then while I'm working on a large format I will also be working on a medium kit also and then I would also like to sprinkle in my scrapbooking also. I get very single focused on one hobby and then I forget about my other hobbies. So I'd also like to sprinkle in a few of my scrapbooking videos every now and then too because I have the supplies. I need to use them. And I have new supplies coming in monthly because I have a kit that I use. So those need to be used too. So I need to kind of, you know, break it up a little bit and, and get my brain going in different directions. So what I've come up with is I bought some magnet frames and I realized I was hanging up into Wonderland. That's the one I was hanging up. I've lost my words there for a second. I was hanging up into Wonderland to work on my desk, get ready for some packing for the scrapbooking retreat that I just went to. And I realized, ooh, wait a minute. That hangs up there quite nicely. I just have a hook on the back of my closet door. So the little wheels in my head started turning and I bought some magnet frames, 
some more. I had two. I bought some more. And I have two drill trays that I like. Now, in the kitting up video, I know I stuck the Worlds Away drills into my suitcase type drill container. And I was excited because I would just be able to zip it up. Everything would stay contained. And I wouldn't get my drills mixed up. But when I sat down last night, I realized I'm missing my, my regular drill tray. I would put something down, I'd put my, I'd put my tools down, and there was no home for my tools. I didn't like that. So I had to stop what I was doing very quickly and pull out my smaller drill tray, which is just a smaller cutlery tray, put all my bottles in there real fast, and, and I do have duplicate tools, so I was able to make a duplicate tool tray. No problem, if you see I'm not using my regular purple pen, I'm using my red pen. So I had to make myself a duplicate tray, one for Worlds Away, one for Into Wonderland. And then I had to come up with a way of being able to tell which tray was which. So what I did is I just took a little round sticker, nothing major, and wrote Worlds Away on it and stuck it to the drill tray. I don't know why I was making it so difficult in my head. As long as I keep the drills, you know, like I don't have them side by side and mix them up, I should be fine just having the name of the kit on my drill tray and I'm keeping my spare drill pouch with the tray. I'm just going to set it on top of the tray when I have it in storage. In storage, I mean it's on my island behind me. Hopefully the cats don't figure out it's up there and, and go tearing across my room. They're not allowed on the island. They know they're not allowed on the island, but they're cats. So anyway, what I've decided to do is use the magnetic frames to hang up the canvas that I'm currently not working on, hey, stick it on the back of the door, and then that drill tray for that matching canvas will just go on my island behind me, and I can flip between two canvases quite easily. And then also by hanging them, the weight of the drills will help keep the canvas straight, depending on what I'm doing. Sometimes they get a little curved when I have them over the pool noodles, so this will help hold them, you know, get them flattened back out a little bit. And then all is right with the world. And then if I have both kits hanging up, I have a spare hook on the inside of the door, so I'm not putting all that weight onto one command hook. Both drill trays can go up on my island, and then I can scrapbook. So I think I have figured out my dilemma as to not be a blonde and get my trays mixed up. So my goal is to not only have two kits going at once to film for you guys so that you don't get bored with the same chat over and over and over, and I would also like to sprinkle in my, my scrapbooking. So if you are not a scrapbooker and you see a scrapbooking video, feel free to skip it if you'd like. Or if you're a scrapbooker and not a diamond painter, feel free to, to skip over those. It's, it's fine. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I just want to give all of my hobbies some love. And this is the best way that I can think to do it for me and in my brain. So moving on, as you can tell, this is a Mandy Manzano. So that means... I always save the 310 stained glass portion for last in each section. I have no idea why I do that. It just makes sense in my brain. I've done it from day one, and I believe my very first Mandy Mazzano was... Which one is it? Let me take a minute and I'll look it up. It's in my book that's right here. Not that one. You want to hear me flipping pages? That's okay. Hello Beastie. Hello Beastie was the first Diamond Art Club that I ever worked on. Not the first one I purchased, but it was the first one I ever worked on. The first one purchased was Worlds Away, and it got lost in my stash, and it took me a year to complete that one. But Hello Beastie was my first Mandy, and I learned very quickly, for some reason in my brain, save those three tens for last. So I always do. Not quite sure why, but I do, and it, I like it, and it makes it fun for me. Now I gotta find my <laughs> my notes for this video. Where did I fit them? I really need to start putting a post-it note on the one that I'm working on. I'll tell you, I'm working with the smaller drill containers that came with the suitcase type storage container. They are much smaller than my quarter tubes, and I feel like I'm working in miniature. It's the weirdest thing. I'm I'm almost scared to hold these tubes. I mean, look how tiny they are compared to my quarter tubes. And I've knocked one over already. So I'm having to be very careful because I have gotten so used to the quarter tubes. So what I may end up doing is 
I may end up just getting a second set of quarter tubes because I think the 100 count that I have, I think if I can get 20 or 30 more, I will be able to easily do two kits at one time. Isn't it funny how spoiled we get with when we finally find our diamond painting piece and the equipment that we love? Isn't it funny how we just get spoiled and we want to use just the good equipment that we enjoy using instead of using our backup equipment? Anyway, I may end up doing that to where I have my quarter tubes. They're bigger, they're chunkier, they're easier to hold. These little ones, they just look like little miniatures. I mean, look how small that is. And I've sent one flying across the room already. I don't know what my deal is, but I'm having to be very careful, not only because of the symbols, but also the size of the drill container. So now we're going to get into story time a little bit. This past weekend, I went with my best friend to a scrapbooking retreat. And while I know this is not a scrapbooking video, it started out as a scrapbooking channel, but I know this is not a scrapbooking video, I want to tell you about my weekend. I had such a lovely time. This was a little bit smaller retreat. Normally we have between 20 and 25 ladies. We had 11 this time, so we had more room to spread out. And man, was it just really, really nice to get in a room of like-minded ladies and just work on your craft. I think I ended up finishing seven double page layouts, so 14 individual pages in a two day period, which is unheard of, totally unheard of for me. I normally work more on the pretty side of the pages. I do a lot of embellishing, a lot of stitching. It takes a lot of time, so I don't normally get that many pages completed. But the stars aligned this time, and not only was I able to embellish until my little heart was content, but I was also able to have a conversation with those around me. It was a very fun group. But there were also times when we all just got quiet, got into our own little grooves. We all take some sort of iPads or, or whatever, audio books. There is a movie screen, so at one point they were watching movies. And I just put on my murder mystery shows and just got to work and then Amy and I have signals because Janine always puts us facing each other so our desks are always to where we face each other so if we want each other when we both have our ears and we start waving like a wild person until you look up and notice the other person it cracks everybody else up in the room when we start doing that but how else are you supposed to get a hold of the person next to you and start throwing things that's rude and we're too far apart to give each other a gentle kick under the table so we just start waving our arms like we're a crazy person until we need something, which is, you know, sometimes, hey, what do you think about this? Or does this look good? Or something's off. You know, what can I put here? Or, you know, if you're working with a sketch that doesn't have measurements, what is this measurement type thing? And I just had a lovely Amy time. And I've needed that. Amy and I have been friends for 26 years. We were acquaintances before that, but we really really grew close during my pregnancy. She's one of my keeper people. I have to have her in my life. And these scrapbooking weekends give us a chance to just take two to four days, depending on how long the retreat is, to just have girl time. Life gets extremely, extremely busy. And when you are trying to raise a family, have a home, take care of the people that are your daily people that you love, adore, and squish and call George, sometimes your friends get put aside and that's one thing that Amy and I have really really tried not to do when Kayla was first born because I was a stay-at-home mom Mike came up with I have Saturdays off we only had one car he worked all week long I was home with the baby by myself all week long and he came up with Saturday is your day Go do whatever you want to do. So Amy and I would get together about once a month or so, and we would just go shopping. And it started off with, let's just go shopping. And then it ended up with, well, let's go to shopping in office stores because we have this crazy obsession with office supplies. And it's really weird that both of us are exactly the same way. You, you find us a good office store, and we're going to be there for a few hours. And then we discovered scrapbooking. And oh my God. Oh my goodness, she thought I was absolutely crazy when I first got into scrapbooking. And like the good friend that I am, I pestered the crap out of her until she got into it. 
And then, you know, she got me into planning. Well, actually, her sister-in-law got her into planning, and then she got me into planning. So I, I think on that one, I really just have to blame Sarah. Now, we like to do these scrapbooking retreat weekends together. And we just turn it into a great big, we scrapbook during the day, and it's kind of a slumber party because you're with like-minded ladies, and pajamas become involved, and we are all just taking care of our memories, having a good time in a safe location. Our family doesn't have to worry about us because we're over there playing with glue and stickers and scissors and paper and, you know, <laughs> there's there's no worry that, you know, that we're up to mischief because they know exactly what we're doing and where we're at. And it's fun and we're okay with that. So that's, you know, that's that's become our thing in the last few years or so. Sadly, I have not gotten Amy into diamond painting. I just, she just will not go over that bridge and jump off and, and join me with diamond painting. But she does watch my videos. So I thank her for that because she does understand my crazy. So after the retreat, I came home, got my, my gear put away, got all my paper put away, all my boxes unloaded, got my room back in order, and then decided a nap was a good thing. And there is nothing as nice as a nap after retreat. Because while you're at retreat, there's not a lot of sleep, not at all. So when I come home, I, Mike helps me unload the car, we get everything put away, and then I go take a shower and sleep. And then we normally go out to eat after that. So that, that signals the end of the girls' weekend. So then yesterday, I started Christmas shopping. Now guys, I hate being in the store during the December crazy. I start my Christmas shopping either September or October, and I try to get it done by Thanksgiving. Now I do this for a couple of reasons. First off, people lose their minds in December. I don't understand what it is, but they totally lose their minds and they're just not as polite in the stores as normally. And I, my patients, I don't have patience for that. So rather than go to jail, I just start my Christmas shopping in September, October. The other reason is if I spread it out over a little bit of time, I end up paying cash for Christmas and then when January comes around, I'm not paying January's credit card bill for Christmas stuff that I bought in December. So for us, it breaks down a little bit easier. I stay out of jail, the credit card stays happy, and I get everything done before Thanksgiving. And then Thanksgiving through Christmas, I don't have to go to department stores. I'm done. So yesterday, I went over to a department store in my area to pick up a few items that were on my list of things that I wanted to look at. And I was kind of shocked. This store in the past, and I'm not gonna mention which store, but this store in the past has been so crowded with product that you could barely get your little hand cart through. You, you know, I used to get hung up on jeans just trying to get the little hand buggy through that there was barely any room to walk because there was so much product. Now, the product is so spread out because I don't know if there's a supply issue thing going on or what's going on but there was more floor space than product to buy and it got me a little bit worried I'm not real sure what's going on but there was not much supply in that store of what you would and this this was a store that you would buy clothing in so that that got me a little bit worried I didn't find everything that I wanted there because their selection was so so low that I also went over to Costco because there were some a few supplies at Costco that I needed and it was the first time I have ever purchased Christmas supplies or Christmas gifts at Costco and that was the only thing I purchased just yesterday at Costco was Christmas gifts and it was really weird just walking out of there with my two or three little items and a you know a package of wrapping paper because I had wrapping paper on sale and I was like well okay I'll buy wrapping paper so I bought an item for Michael two items for my mother and then the rest was I was concentrating on Joe and Kayla to get them taken care of my niece and nephew I know what I'm doing for them my mother-in-law and father-in-law have no clue no clue what at all and then of course my Amy I have no clue so I'm gonna have to, something's just really gonna have to strike me for those people. For Michael, I, the one big thing that I spotted, I ran over there really quick and got, but for him, I, hmm, what do you get for your husband that, that 
is a nerd and, and has all the things that he wants. I'm going to have to think about that. I, I have trouble with him every year. So those that's what I started yesterday, was just getting all that put together, getting the list started in my brain on who, what, when, where. Is there anything I need to ship, which I hope I don't have to ship anything, because I really don't want to do that. And starting the process of getting my Christmas organized. Now the other part of that is also getting my meals organized for both Thanksgiving and Christmas <laughs> because those they sneak a holiday sneak up on me they sneak up on me badly and it's like the day before Thanksgiving and I'm like oh crap I haven't bought anything for Thanksgiving so what I want to do is I want to make my list of what I want to make for both holidays and then I want to go buy my turkey I want to go buy my ham and then I want to go buy what I need for those holidays and just get them in the freezer, get them in the pantry, and not worry about it. That way, all I have to worry about is the first stuff that I normally buy. Be because I'm the world's worst at, at planning for a holiday, especially one that I have to cook for. I get so stuck in my weekly menu planning and just going to the store every two weeks and knowing that what I've got on hand that I forget about the special stuff. And I forget to keep supplies on hand for the special occasion dinners and stuff. So that's the other thing I want to do is I want to run over and get my turkey, get my ham, get all the side goodies, and just be as prepared as possible for those holidays that I know I'm horrible at pre-planning and, and making sure I have in my house ahead of time. And if you think Christmas and Thanksgiving are bad, you really should see me on Labor Day and, and Memorial Day. I don't know if it's because I used to work holidays and we didn't get to do holidays on the holiday we had to do it later so in my brain I've got more time than I really have but hopefully I just want to get my ducks in a row this year I want to be organized this year in my holidays and then I also want to enjoy my holiday I don't want the stress why put myself through the stress when I have time to get it done ahead of time so you guys be my taskmaster and hold me to it and let's see how prepared I can actually be this year now, if Amy has listened this far into the video, she's rolling around on the floor laughing because in her brain, I am organized in all things. And she would be really surprised in all the things that I'm truly not organized in. So Amy, if you're listening at this point, get off the floor and quit laughing at me. And her next thought's going to be, well, don't you have this stuff in, in your working pantry? No, actually, I do not. I don't keep holiday fixings in my working pantry or in my regular rotation pantry because I just keep our daily food items that we enjoy. I lost my word there for a second, I'm sorry. Stuff that we cook on a, on a usual basis. I don't keep specialty items in either one of those pantries. I have a regular kitchen pantry and then I have a working pantry. If you don't understand those terms, go, go look it up. I'm not gonna turn this into a, a prepper channel. I do have a couple of videos on this channel for my kitchen pantry and my working pantry if you're interested in those that explain how I keep our food rotation going and how I keep my meal planning stocked and organized. If you're interested in those, go ahead and, and look those videos up, but I don't want to turn this into a prepper channel. I don't consider myself a prepper, I just consider myself prepared. There is a difference. So. To answer Amy's question, no, I don't have that in my in my pantry. So yes, we do need to go shopping and take care of those items before the holidays. So while everybody else is out in the cold and in our neck of the woods in the rain, possibly the ice, trying to get their ducks in a row for Christmas, I will be snugged up with my wool socks on, sitting by the window watching the weather, diamond painting. So see, there is a method to my madness. And I'm, I'm not as crazy as I seem sometimes. Okay, I'm going to take a minute because we always get to the end of these videos and I always forget to do this or I run out of time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining me today. I know you have a choice of channels that you can be watching. There's 101 different diamond painters out there. And I truly, truly appreciate that you spend a few minutes of your day with me. Again, I do not make any money off these videos. I do this solely for fun. And I do enjoy it. I, I make... The, the diamond painting, the scrapbooking, the occasional planner video, <laughs> the occasional pantry video. This channel, you know, just has a little bit of everything, but I do truly enjoy that you're here. And I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you. We are almost, oh, we are, we are on the, on the three tens, which means we are ending this section. And I am working on the stained glass portion now that we've circled back around to the diamond painting. 
for some reason her stained glass just doing the three tins last completes it doesn't it doesn't just feel like it's it's you're you're working on the borders and you're making it just come together I am going to enjoy this kit I, it's been a while since I've worked on Mandy but her kits are always just a joy to work with so I'm going to take my time not speed through it enjoy the process and just be at peace enjoy my craft and enjoy my alone time as moms how often do we actually get alone time so I cherish what I get it doesn't matter if you've got little kids or adult kids a mom is a mom a mom is always a mom so take your time for yourself enjoy your time for yourself enjoy your craft so I'm just about finished I'm putting away my toys making sure that my drills are seated and there are none sticking up kind of cleaning up my space and thank you so much for joining me <laughs> until next time bye bye